Hi, I'm Joshua Stern with the Stern team at Keller Williams, and my goal is to keep you guys educated about all things real estate, so when it comes to buying, selling, or investing, you guys make informed decisions. So this one's gonna take you, you know, maybe about five minutes or so to read, so grab your notepad. With listing inventory down 40% year over year and homes selling at breakneck speeds, buyers looking for homes under 450,000 along the Wasatch Front are finding out just how competitive this market is. So there are quite a few different strategies that you guys can deploy when you're in a multiple offer situation competing in multiple offers and I'm gonna mention a few of them and then I'm gonna uh, kind of convince you guys to create a backup offer in the event that you lose that multiple offer situation gives you kind of an ace in the hole if you will so the first thing that you need to make sure you're going to do and that is you're going to hire a highly experienced buyers agent uh, a buyers only agent who knows how to win in this market and that's no joke so don't mess around there second you've got to raise your earnest money level up to or close to your down payment earnest money belongs to the buyer and is applied to the down payment or the closing costs at the time of settlement so if you're making your offer contingent on inspections appraisal or finance you have three different options for being able to get out of the contract and keep your earnest money now your agent can help to ensure that they're protecting that earnest money with these contingencies and their corresponding deadlines. Third thing, write the highest offer you can afford. You guys, this last weekend we listed a home at 425,000 and we accepted an offer at 507,000. Now that's not exactly the norm, but normally in multiple offer situations, we're gonna see prices increase by maybe five to 15%. So write a strong offer. And if it's contingent on appraisal and the property doesn't appraise, you can negotiate the offer or you can cancel the contract and retain your earnest money if it's done within the correct contract deadlines. Fourth thing, and this is an easy one, a no-brainer, but write a letter from you to the seller telling them a little bit about who you are and why you're head over heels in love with their home. And be genuine, you guys, be yourself. For a seller who's lived in their home for a long period of time and they've got great friends in the neighborhood, it's just as emotional to sell as it is for you to buy. So make a connection with them using your letter and make sure the agent communicates the letter in the body of the email that they send with the offer, as well as in a uh, document that's attached to the offer itself. So the fifth thing is be sure that your agent calls the listing agent to ask them what besides price is most important to the seller. So I find out many sellers need extra time to move out of the house. Perhaps they're in a situation like you are where they're also a buyers competing in a competitive market. They may need to find a little bit more time uh, to get their relocation residence. So consider offering them an interim occupancy with your offer. Maybe give them even 30 days for free. And if they need a little bit more time than that, maybe give them up to the next 60 days at whatever your per diem is, which is the cost of your loan. This one is huge and it goes a long way for sellers who are in need. Sixth, have a short due diligence time frame as well as short appraisal and short finance deadlines. The shorter your time frames, the less the seller will worry about how long they'd be off the market in the event that the buyer, you, cancels the contract. Time is of the essence, so consider having your agent get in touch with a qualified inspector up front to see if you can get a home inspection done maybe within three days and then use a five to seven day due diligence time period for your inspection. And talk to your lender up front and have them collect all necessary documents and then and run those through an automated system for underwriting. This ensures that your loan's gonna close quickly, maybe within three weeks. And then of course you have the appraisal ordered right when the property goes under contract because it's gonna take the appraiser probably four to seven days just to get out to the property. And by then you'll have already done your due diligence and repair requests, if any, those will be negotiated. The seventh thing is consider waiving or compromising contingencies. So for example, you may agree to waive the due diligence um, or the home inspection contingency. If you're comfortable taking the property and as is condition, then consider waiving that contingency. You can always purchase a home warranty on the property that can assist should any of the major systems in the home break down. So talk to a good home warranty company up front and figure out what their policies will cover and, and how much it's gonna cost. And I find that a good home warranty will cost usually less than $500 a year for peace of mind. Um, you can consider waiving your appraisal contingency as well. Even if you offer above the list price and maybe you're concerned about the appraisal coming in at value and you have enough cash savings that you can cover the difference, then don't make the offer contingent upon an appraisal. 
And then also you can choose to avoid uh, uh, the financing deadline. So if you're super well qualified and have a lender that you wholeheartedly trust that runs you through that underwriting system, then you may have the peace of mind to move forward without being concerned about obtaining the financing. The eighth thing is make your earnest money or part of your earnest money hard up front. Earnest money shows the seller how serious you are about purchasing your home. I've referenced already putting up as much earnest money as you can when competing. And I've also given you the caveat that you, you need a really good buyer's only agent that you can trust in an effort to protect those hard earned dollars. So say you offer $10,000 in earnest money, then maybe consider taking $2,500 of that and make it hard up front. And then make another $2,500 hard after you complete your uh, due diligence or the inspection period. That shows the seller your level of sincerity in completing the process. And finally, number nine, if you've done everything you can do and listen to the advice of your expert realtor and still didn't get the home, then consider writing a backup offer on the property. This is an addendum to the initial contract that states that the seller has in fact accepted a primary offer. However, if that primary offer fails, then you're going to move forward with your offer as previously agreed upon and at that point your deadlines will start as far as the contingencies. Here's the thing you need to know about that. More than 25% right now of all offers that are accepted between a buyer and a seller are failing to reach the closing tables and that means basically you have at least a one in four chance of still getting that home well at the same time a backup offer does not prevent you from going out and offering on other homes so there are even more techniques that we use with our buyers to help win in a multiple offer situation from escalation clauses to guaranteed single offer verbiage we deploy the ones that will work for you to win we also offer a love it or leave it buyer protection program with the stern team which guarantees that you're gonna love your home no matter what or will sell it for free. So please give us a call if you feel like you need an expert to help you navigate this incredibly complicated market.